May I come in, sir? Yeah, please come. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Please sit down. Thank you, sir. We call you Krishna, right? Krishna, sir. Ah, uh, Krishna. Yes. So, Krishna, take a minute and introduce yourself. So, my name is Krishna Chandra Gupta. Hmm. I come from Gwalior. I have done my schooling from Kendra Vidyalaya Sangathan. Uh, thereafter, I have uh, done my graduation in electrical engineering. Post that, I have a stint in uh, uh, Deloitte as an advisory analyst. And uh, thereafter, I have been preparing for UPSC. Well, the modern day generation will call you Krishna, Rama, Yoga. Hmm? Yes. What is, why, why they distort the name? So, firstly, because uh, most of the people read my name in English hmm. and therefore uh, in, there is an uh, issue with translation from Hindi to English and therefore A is being added. Uh, secondly, there is a name called Krishna. Uh, Krishna is the name of Draupadi. Hmm. So, uh, yes. whenever we see a woman having a name Krishna, that is, uh, she is having the, the name has been inspired so from Draupadi. So, there is a gender so. issue between Krishna and Krishna. Yes. Correct. Now, tell me, we are just thinking of having tea. Then a thought came to my mind that the tea is what Indianness is. This is the cosmopolitan thing. It is the most cosmopolitan thing that we have. How can you explain that? So, in uh, Indian tradition, it is said that whenever we uh, a guest is arrives and we uh, politely offer them the tea, uh, but uh, at the same time, it is being uh, seen in rural background as well. But at the same time, many other beverages are being offered. In no, no, I am I am concerned with tea only. How can you see say that the tea is the most Indian thing? It is, speaks of each state of India, most of the states, most of the zones. Uh, so, though tea, the arrival tea has its origin from China, but mm. uh, today India is one of the largest uh, producer of tea. But at the same time, if we see the unity of India, the tea is being grown in Northeast and it is being uh, offered uh, in uh, South India as well as the North India. Mm. So, it has been a kind of a thread that unites India. And sugar, from where sugar is coming? So, sugar, recently the UP has been the largest producer Good. and uh, second would be the Maharashtra. From where the milk is coming? So, Gujarat has been the largest one, but what? at the same time, most of the... What about water? So, all over The there. masalas, adrak and uh, ilaichi, where they are grown? So, some of the masalas like uh, khada masala as well as clove is being uh, yeah. used and is grown in the South India. So, don't you think this is complete India? It is a complete hmm. India. What do you mean by development? People say that now Noida is developed. Means what, what has happened in Noida? So mainly development uh, here is being seen as an infrastructure development. But at the same time, if we uh, see at the holistic definition of the development, it also includes the human development index, such as pro provision of health literacy, health facility, as well as the assets like housing, uh, the TV, as well as the other things. So, somebody said to me that when I see a big hotel, big restaurant, so I think they are only catering for my taste. They don't cater for the hunger of the poor. How correct I am? Sir, so, though it is, seems that uh, they cater a specific uh, population because of the charges that they offer, but at the same time, we need to understand that hotels uh, provide employment to a large uh, people and uh, some of the workers over there are come from a very diff diverse background of uh, society. But so does the poor um, uh, small hotels also, like Marwadi hotels or the simple hotels we here in ORN. They also provide employment. Yes, sir. Uh, but at the same time, uh, the what since uh, in India we have a freedom of choice, and uh, if it is available and if one can afford it, uh, the service should be provided to them. My last question. Why should um, someone was telling me that there is no purpose in India remaining with the Commonwealth? We should leave Commonwealth. No purpose is being served. Should I take his suggestion? So, Commonwealth game has this. Uh, Not game. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, the group of Commonwealth uh, represents a dark history of India, that is the colonization. Uh, and uh, yes, uh, the, uh, the issue so has. Why, why, why not Tamso Mahajotir Gamera? Forget the dark history, go toward the brightness. Yes, sir.
Uh, but at the same time, we need to understand that uh, Commonwealth today provides a platform for India's leadership. Uh, at the same time, Commonwealth is being seen as uh, a platform where India can bring the voices of the global south. So in that way, we need to, uh, more discussion should be uh, there in order to, to come to a decision. Whether we should, we we should form a committee then. A boy in 10th standard in school comes to you for career counselling that guide me for a career and he says that I want to become a powerful person in, in India. And according to him, the most powerful people today are Supreme Court judges. That's what he said. So he says, how do I become a Supreme Court judge? Guide him. So, first of all, uh, if he is very much determined for his objective, I would not uh, uh, suggest any other else because anything other... You don't have that choice, he has decided now. Uh, as a Supreme Court judge, uh, he first has to complete his LLB. Uh, he has to take... A, he can take the science background in 11th, 12th or he can take the arts background. Uh, com once completing the 12th standard, he can uh, write for the All India Law Examination and he can complete his LLB. Post that for becoming a Supreme Court judge, uh, there are a few conditions in the constitution which has been given. First of all, the uh, person should be uh, having, a, should have a span of uh, the, as an advocate of 10 years, or he should be the judge of, uh, for, uh, in high court for five years, or he should be a uh, distinguished jurist. So if he can present himself to a distinguished jurist to the president, then also he can become the judge of Supreme Court. So you guide him about, uh, for these three, th three things, how should he go about it? He doesn't know how to become a jurist. Yes. What is the easier way for him? So first of all, uh, I would uh, uh, tell him to first concentrate on his uh, 11th and 12th standard. And uh, be, if he has an inclination towards polity, he should uh, go for the subjects which includes political science. Uh, once he is done with it, the constitution he should uh, concentrate on. And that makes you a Supreme Court judge. Sir, the uh, eligibility qualification would be such like, but uh, I'm not sure. What the answer that you have given, he could have read in the internet also. Why did he come to you? The, the requirements of 10 years, 5 years and all that. This is theory. Leave it. Let's uh, move to other aspects of judicial. India is one of the biggest judicial systems in the world, right? And yet, uh, there are some shortcomings, there are some problems. This question is an extremely simple and easy and expected question. But there is, but uh, I have a demand in the question. My demand is that your answer should be prioritized. Uh, give me uh, five shortcomings of Indian judicial system, starting from number one is the most important in the decreasing order. Just bullet point, half a line to explain that, not more than that. So, first of all, the pendency of cases. We have around. So, that's the number one most important. Yes, sir. Okay. most important. The pendency of. We have around 4.6 crore cases. That's why okay. it's not most important. It cannot be. We fill up. The, okay, so continue. Uh, second would be the high uh, vacancies which are in uh, judiciary. Uh, we have around 40% uh, uh, vacancy in our uh, high court uh, judiciary. Uh, third one would be the inclusion as well as the inclusive uh, uh, judiciary. We have a low representation of women among the judiciary. Women will increase it. Okay. Yes. And uh, I think let's restrict ourselves to these three. Fourth and fifth are going to be obviously less important than these. Right. How are women going to solve this problem? Do you think the women will uh, solve, uh, decide uh, cases much faster than the men? So much so that crores will become lax? It's difficult to imagine that. True, sir. Uh, uh, the representation of women will increase. That's a social, there's a social angle to it. I'm not denying that. But how will it solve the problem of numbers? 4.6 crore is the number. Yes, sir. For number, we have to look into so, other So, solutions. women is not an answer. We move a little up. Sec the second thing was to fill up all the vacancies of judiciary. High court judges, you said 40%. So, what? How many cases are there in high court out of 4.6 crores? 90% of them are not in high courts, they are in the lower courts. Lower court vacancies are much less than 40%. Supposing going by your argument, all courts, all vacancies are fulfilled. Even then, how many cases can they decide? 5 lakhs, 10 lakhs, 15 lakhs, 20 lakhs, not more than that. 
for if it remains 4.2 crore you are happy no sir uh, this is so the there has to be some other problem i'm giving you last chance to think about it i'm sorry sam okay that's that's not fine so are you aware about darpan uh, platform so uh, i'm not sure here but it has been uh, uh, niti ayog has provided hmm. darpan platform what for what it is so it's for ngo registration ngo registration hmm. okay why should niti ayog be asking all ngo to register with them after all the re- societies ngos are under the registration act don't you think this is all flimsy issue if you have to go for government grant you have to go for tenders sir registration of ngo is uh, very no, much no that is under the registration act every sub registrar is there in every sub division society is act so i'm sorry i'm not able to understand the question why niti ayog should register should uh, should ask for registration for any government aid or government program i'm just asking uh, so i okay apply your mind think about this okay what changes uh, there has been in fcra any idea have you heard about fcra yes sir uh so the recent changes that has been brought in fcra is uh, regarding the uh, persons who can receive the foreign uh, contribution it has uh, some of the persons like uh, the political the persons with political background as well as the person which are uh, included in the services of the government there has been uh, some uh, limitation Ex- has been excluded uh, yes. from such thing okay what else Okay. So there are few. I'm not able to read. Ah, there, there are significant changes. Okay, right. So there is often a lot of complaint, right, that uh, the democracy is getting stifled. Okay, FCRA, so many cases. Do you think this opposition going to Supreme Court? is complete collapse of political system here constitutional machinery in this country all opposition going there ki we are not being parliament is not functioning what do you see is it a political conspiracy or gimmickry or what what is your view so it is true that uh, we are not able to ensure that our parliamentary system works and therefore the opposition so is so who is st- uh, who is at fault so both the ruling party as well as the opposition as well as there are some responsibility which also lies to the citizenry uh, we have seen uh, cr- high criminalization in our uh, political system and uh, we are not uh, able to stop it so therefore the citizenry also should be held responsible secondly uh, there has no been a legal sanction where the specific number of ca- days which a parliament should or must <coughs> sit so therefore it lies on the discretionary power and therefore the uh, parliament is not able to work uh, third would be the uh, so the, how some, do you how do you suppose you have to give two three dictums for parliament functioning what would you suggest so first of all would be uh, fixing the number of uh, days that parliament must sit in a year hmm. uh, that would be Cheek one hai. Uh, secondly would be a prioritization of the uh, subjects that needs to be discussed and uh, adjournment in a particular day should not exceed more than right. twice or thrice right uh, three would be uh, more chance should be given to the new mps rather than the one who are already spoken so uh, a new crop of uh, politician as well as the leaders should come and the new subjects but you are not prohibiting you are only prescribing new thing there should be also no pro- uh, prohibition on say entering the well slow raising slogans and shoutings so that would not be uh, correct in why uh, why should they they have they have gone there to raise public issue not their political issue political issue they can battle with the public so this is uh, a freedom which is given to member of parliament in uh, constitution and uh, it should not be civil because okay. it would be hampering the okay electrical engineering uh, now is in- all engineering merging uh, 
So it is partly true that uh, some of the domains uh, require or ha can have a general uh, info knowledge and therefore you can all the engineers can work on it. Mm. Uh, for example, data advisory. Uh, but at the same time, there were there are some of the specific where the so in case is. of civil service, in that case, if all engineering everything is connected in this world. Then this debate of a specialist and generalist is irrelevant in civil service. What is your view? So debate is uh, would it would not. No be debate can happen, but the logic. I mean, debate means the relevance. Yes. yes. Uh, Krishna, have you heard about soft power? Huh? What is soft power? So soft power is the ability of a country to ensure that only of a country or even an individual. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. Uh, its soft power is the ability of an individual or a country or a society in order to secure its national interest with or the personal interest without using the uh, hard power or the actual power or uh, uh, muscling, flexing the muscles of somebody. You know, we are Indian society is naturally, uh, what should I say? It comes very natural to them that they apply their soft power. Hmm? Why? So we have been a welcoming uh, civilization from an ancient time. And, uh, oh. and therefore, we always believe, we come from a tradition of Mahatma Gandhi ji. And we always believe... Only Mahatma Gandhi or there is a long list in fact? Sir, long list. Uh, from uh, starting from Buddha to Akbar to Ashoka as well as the Mahatma Gandhi ji. We be always believed in dialogue. And Ashoka? Yes. Does he fit into this category? So post his, uh, uh, once he realized that... Uh, so they, when he became from Chanda Ashok to... Ashoka the Great. Yes. Huh? Yes. What made what what made this transition? So the war and the disruption caused by the Kalinga War, and once he saw that and the fertility of the war, so he realized that uh, that world should uh, go towards more peaceful. Can you can you think of some world leaders of Indian origin? Uh, so. First of all, the Vice President of uh, Kamala uh, USA, Kamala Harris. Yeah. Uh, second would be the Prime Minister of uh, UK, that is uh, Mr. Rishi Sunak. Uh, then um, the Home Minister of, uh, the Home Secretary of uh, UK as well. Uh, uh, as well as the Presidents of Suriname, as well as the uh, other countries, some of the other countries. A lot of them. Yes, sir. Uh, Portugal uh, Prime Minister has also been uh, from yes, Indian origin. If you, if you take heads of government, heads of states of Indian origin, uh, of you will have a small multilateral organization, in fact. Now, how can this help India in its soft power? So when can we expect them to be take, always take a pro-India stand? So it would not be correct to assume that they would take a pro-India stand. Uh, and in fact, some of the uh, observers uh, think that uh, Indian origin person at the opposite side of the table is not very good for Indian side as well. Very good. Why do you say it's not very good? So in the sense that whenever a person... So to some extent, I would tend to agree with you. But why it is? Because we thought this is a great asset. Uh, true, sir. Uh, but at the same time, when a person of Indian... So why should a leader of Indian origin be more difficult in negotiations with India? So, first of all, because uh, in order to, uh, the optics work here. The, the optics works here. And they because work. he would always be seen soft on India. Yes, sir. And, he and therefore, he has to be hard <laughs> to prove that he is not. Yes. Hmm? Coming to electricity. You know, I, when we studied as electricity as kids, we thought electricity always required a medium to travel. But now I get the impression it doesn't need medium to travel. True, sir. Uh, How is this happening? Uh, sir, uh, you I'm have cordless charging. You have so many things where the, where the medium is not required anymore. Yes, sir. So we are using the electromagnetic waves for the transfer of the charges. And uh, therefore, it is being... Uh, made as a feasible that uh, the medium... Who was the first, uh, f I would not even use a physicist because he was not, 
uh, who kind of proved this that for electric electricity to travel medium was not required and people joked and they laughed at him no, i'm not aware of i'll read more into it all right i will stop here Thank <laughs> you.